We have several different techniques that we use for making nukes throughout the season. Um, it depends on the, the weather, the time of year, if it's early and cool or later and hot like it is today. And of course, the, all the techniques are for a different purpose. And what we're doing here today is uh, beginning the process of creating nukes that will be queen mating nukes. We'll put queen cells in them. Uh, we use a deep box over an excluder. We shake the bees off of brood and honey and put it above the excluder and then come back the next day and harvest those assets. We call them assets and create the nukes, knowing then that it's queen free. Um, there is an extra step here, uh, but it means we don't have to find the queen, so we think it's more efficient. Um, today's the first step. We actually normally do this first step on a Thursday, but we're doing it on a Wednesday this week because it's supposed to rain a lot tomorrow and we, we need these nukes to be done on Friday. So today we're going to create the first step where the brood and honey is above an excluder, queen free. We'll come back on Friday, harvest those assets into a nuke box and then take them to a location where we'll set them up with a queen cell and that queen cell will hatch and mate on Saturday. It's pretty simple. There is an extra step, but I think it's more efficient, and uh, we'll show you how we do it. Okay, this, this technique's really pretty simple, and what's cool about it is you don't have to find the queen, so a lot of beginner beekeepers might find this attractive. We just get uh, one frame out of the box, make ourselves some space. Of course, we want to make sure the queen's not on that frame, take a glance. What I want this colony to be left with is about two frames of brood and a frame of honey. Everything else can go into nukes. And when we're finished and come back and harvest all the assets, we'll put a two gallon bucket on this and get it back to growing rapidly. So, I want to create frames that I can use for nukes and put them in this upper box. I need good frames of food, so I'm just going to shake the bees off. That way I know the queen's not there. That's two frames of food. We're starting to see a little brood here. That'd be a good one to leave behind. That's a nice frame of brood that could go into a nuke. I always like to make a fast glance, see if the queen's on there. If you find the queen, your shaking is over. You can just place her back in the box and you don't have to shake. That's a nice frame of brood. I can leave that behind in the colony. That's a nice frame of brood. Another nice brood. about a half a frame of brood. I'll leave that with the mother colony. Put a queen excluder on. That gave me two frames of food and two frames of brood. Um, when we come back, we'll use assets from all of these colonies and combine them into what we want in the nuke boxes. One colony might give us several brood and not very much food. Another colony like this one might give us more food and not as much brood. It's all okay because when we come back, we can combine all those pieces and parts into the nukes, build them how we want. We can do another one here. 
Martin, would you grab me a deep box, please? See what this one told see what this one will give us. Okay, there's about a half a sheet of brood. I think I'll leave that behind for the mother colony. That's a pretty nice frame of brood. That looks like a good frame that we could start nukes with. There's a lot of larvae and eggs on that one. A lot of pollen. I've already got the good beginnings of a restart for this colony. There's the queen. So now that I've found the queen and I put her in the colony, I don't have to shake anymore. I know she's in there. That made that job a little easier. So this box was much different than that one. I've got five frames with brood in this box with a frame of food. Left the colony, the original colony, two frames of brood and a frame of food. And uh, we'll restart them like that. That's a lot of assets that we can use when we come back on Friday. That combined with that will make several nukes. I always like to keep those green drone frames against the wall when we have them in a box. If the bees want to re rear drones, they'll go over there and use that, no problem. Okay, day two, uh, we're going to harvest the assets we have in these upper boxes and uh, make nukes. It goes really fast because we know the queen's not there. Each box is going to get two frames of brood, or at least a frame and a half, and a couple of foundations. That's a big fat food frame. That's a nice frame of brood right there. Another nice brood. And 
and another foundation. That nuke's done. As you can see, there's not a lot of bees in there, but it's so hot out that that's going to work. It's late July, so it doesn't take as many bees to keep a nuke uh, going. Brood. Brood. Foundation. And we'll just get into the next colony and see what they have. Apparently this was a stronger colony. It's got a lot more stuff in it, obviously. There's some nice extra bees. That's helpful. I slip that in there instead of that foundation. And I think I'll put these extra bees in this one because they could use it. And there's a nice food to go with our two broods. That one's done. So it's really as simple as that. You can see that all of these colonies here in this yard are set up and ready to go. Um, we'll come out of here. I think there's 39 colonies that are set up like this. We'll probably come out of here with 70 nukes. And quick and easy. They need to be full. If they're like down a little bit, they'll drip quite a bit before they catch the vacuum. Okay, okay. little puff of smoke before you pull the screens off always helps keeps them from barreling out we'll pull the screens and then put cells in these and we'll be done I like using this spot as a mating yard because it has all these little features that the nukes can zero in on. Little pine trees, stumps, sticks, mounds, clumps of weeds and grass. It's a good spot. We routinely get 90% take on our mating here and sometimes even better. Any place that the nukes have nice features they can tune into when they're flying back home is a good thing. Oh, they're done. Okay, time to go. When I was reviewing the footage for this video, getting it ready to go and doing some editing, I noticed one clip that showed these geometrical forms on the front of many of our nuke boxes. I thought it would be sure to raise some questions, so I thought I would address it here. Decades ago, I read an article in a bee magazine written by a researcher that had done a study on uh, putting marks on the front of nuke boxes to see if it increased uh, queen mating success, or in other words, helped the virgin queens find their way home to the proper entrance. And uh, he was convinced it did. His research seemed to point in that direction. And I picked up on that. It made sense to me. I thought, well, why not? Can't hurt anything, right? So several years ago, I had an employee by the name of Terry. Terry will love this if he's watching. Um, and I asked him to print the alphabet on all of our nuke boxes. 
and that was a lot of nuke boxes, several thousand nuke boxes he did that to one winter. I think Terry got bored halfway through because he started putting happy faces on some of them and other colorful figures. Anyway, one thing Terry did really well is he picked the right colors. Uh, these are excellent colors for bees. Um, if you research it, you'll see that uh, bees see a different color spectrum than we do. Uh, we see some of the same colors, but their, their vision reaches into the ultraviolet range where ours does not, and our ability to see color reaches into the red side of the spectrum where theirs does not. We see, we see red, but bees do not, and that's why many beekeepers, uh, ourselves included, use red lights on forklifts when they're loading bees at night because the bees don't see red and they don't swarm to those lights, as, and not, nothing like they do with the white lights. And then uh, we don't see the ultraviolet side. And uh, these particular colors right here are excellent for bees because uh, the best colors for bees' vision is violet, purple, and blue. And Terry picked these colors. He did an excellent job. Anyway, that's the story behind the happy face. And that's the story behind the colors and the figures on the front of our nuke boxes.